Hey, there you are. Alonzo B. Slater is an American actor from Jersey City, New Jersey. Alonzo knew he wanted to be an actor after auditioning for Lion King on Broadway at the tender age of 11. He miraculously finished at top 15 of Simba out of 300 hopeful kids. This experience helped Alonzo understand the drive and passion needed for the industry. Years later, Alonzo graduated from William Patterson University with an English degree, and his goal was to teach. He soon realized he wanted to return to his true passion, acting. Alonzo B. Slater is a well-accomplished actor, model, and comedian. He has been seen in several commercials and print ads, such as Asics, Verizon, American Express, Facebook, Stella Artois, Ford, to name a few. Alonzo B. Slater also starred in countless indie films, television shows, and shorts, such as Remembering Wednesday, which was the official selection of Webisode Film Festival. Alonzo continues to passionately pursue his acting career today. Most recently, Alonzo has starred in a featured film as a lead role on A Christmas for Mary that will be on Oprah's own network, which I liked very much. Thank you for your support, show me for real for an hour. So nervous in that one. <sighs> Why were you and, nervous? Uh, because it's my first like feature film. You know what I mean? It's like it's the first time like the world and like, you know, our peers get to see me act, you know, and so it was just nerve wracking, but everyone loved it. Um, I was able to get another role from that without auditioning. So that was great. So that comes out this Christmas on Lifetime. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's and it was a lead role again, but it's, you know, it's all Christmas films, but you know, I'm grateful because before that, nobody was knocking on my door. So <laughs> I'm grateful, you know, and I know more. Man, man. You sound like you stay very busy, brother. I do. I do. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm enjoying this ride because I don't know when it's going to be over. So, mm -hmm. you How important do you feel like it is to just stay busy? Like, you know, like, especially in the world of like networking and, you know, just building yourself as a brand and, you know, the whole shebang. Like, why is, you said, why is it? Why is it important to stay busy? Like, like, how important is that to you? Just the consistency? Oh, I mean, honestly, when, before moving to LA, I was in Jersey, and I felt like I already built a, a small community of, like, of supporters and people I knew in, in the industry from, like, photographers and stylists, you know, a few casting directors, acting coaches, um, and just peers that's also doing it like me. But when I moved to LA, it was, um, you know, time to hit the ground running and meet new people and, um, and you know experience you know new things and I, shelby was one of the first people i met doing background work yeah. um for a show <laughs> on, the cooking, on the cooking channel and she's been so supportive from that day until like now wow and what time 4 10 p.m she still supports me and you know and it's vice versa um so just meeting people it, you know it took time um i remember meeting you on set um, and you know, you were just like, you said something like, this background shit is for the birds. Like, I remember, <laughs> I remember, I remember. that. So remember. Like, there's a lot of people who do want to break into the industry, right? So like, what would you tell them at that moment? Like in that moment that you were in, like, what would you tell them? Uh, honestly, you know, have patience, um, ask questions. Uh, I feel like that's, that, that helps people get to, the next step by asking questions, but I feel like a lot of people, especially in our community, we are so prideful with like, you know, not, you know, being vulnerable to ask someone yeah. if you need something, but you don't know that person might have the answers, Shelby. Yeah. Right. So it's like, you have to be open and be okay with not knowing everything. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so that's what I did when I was on social media and I see people that's doing better than me. And, I, and if I want to be there too, and, and, I, and if I know I just, deserve to be in that same uh same place as them write to them you ask questions sometimes they might just read it and might not get back to you and sometimes they might or it's even better in person so like i feel like networking going out to certain places and events in hollywood it's it's uh it's beneficial because you might see that cast and director or you might see that actor that that's on your favorite show that you want to be on and just ask them certain questions not asking them about you know how can i get a job or an audition but it's like you know ask them to ask them their 
story and how they got there and, you know, how they, you know, uh, how they developed that role and, you know, you know, what steps did they get, what steps did they take to get to that certain place? You know? Is that what you asked um, Chadwick Boseman? And me, I was a seat filler. Oh, <laughs> nice. Shout out to I was a seat filler. Absolutely. You know. Yeah. <laughs> you know I, mean? yeah, I, so I was a seat filler <laughs> and um, I was in the seat sitting right behind him and he walked in and I, uh, you know, I got, um, I got the uh, the guest, the lady that walked him in, I got her attention. I asked if I could sit next to him. And he said, yeah, come up. And we spoke and I, I asked him, you know, not about how can I get an audition, but how did you get to where you're at today? How did you get to this seat at the ESPYs today? Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, you know, he, he, and he was telling me like certain shit that is like, it resonated and I would never forget on how to stay present always stay present, never let people forget about you because LA is a very fast town. And it's like, if you're not doing what you have to do, people will forget about you. Um, stay true. present, stay, you, you know, stay focused, stay on the grind, stay in class if you need to stay in class. Also, you know, just being a good person. He said that as well. You know what I mean? Being a good person, being someone that, you know, people will call you, you know, that you're loyal, you're dependable. Um, people love that in, in, yeah. um, in Hollywood. And so those those right. things resonate in our mind and business. Don't be worried about other people's moves and on, on, on how other people's gotten certain things. Just stay focused and stay, you know, stay committed. And I will never forget that conversation I had. With, you feel you know like that, I mean? that conversation changed you instantly? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I was still on the grind, you know what I mean? You're not, not saying it went through one ear and out the other, because, you know, I was like, oh, everyone is saying that. But he he was very serious the way he looked at me. He was like, no, like, if you do these things, you will be good. And the photographers came out of nowhere. I'm like, all right, well, I got to go. He's like, no, no, no. This is what you want, right? This is it. So stay and take these photos with me. It was oh, all no. It was all <laughs> love. Like, wow, this is dope. So I'm yeah. you know you manifested that. You know you manifested that. <laughs> <Absolutely. laughs> That's a so, moment. That was, like what? It was. It was. It was. And right after he, I mean, he passed away. Maybe like the two days after I booked that first lead role. For real? Yeah. Uh, maybe like the day after he passed away, I I was I booked it. I'm like, wow, these are um. You know, I don't know, some spirits or some good voodoo, but I deserve, you know, I want more of that. <laughs> yeah. I always told you, because I'm like, you have, you had that look, you know, it was like that. You look, always like said that. that show. It was like that raw passion. And I'm like, he's not here to play. You not know? at all. And when you hit, you hit you with the with his background play. shit is for the birds, I was like, <laughs> okay. He's not playing. <laughs> like, you know? And I, I still like, did I background a little bit after that. I still did background gig you did, right? But no, it was on uh, Eddie Murphy's movie. Oh, uh, Dolomite. Dolomite. Oh, I did that one too. And that was it. After that, I think, it was it. Yeah, I, I didn't get I didn't get playtime on that though. Yeah, me neither. And I'm at, you know, everything happens for a reason. But um, yeah. And I still did background even after the, I met you because I knew that I had to pay rent. You know, I don't know a lot of people out here. And it's like, you know, I got to follow the steps. And those were the steps. <laughs> Having my roommates living with, you know, with so many people at a time. And it was crazy. <laughs> it's been the <laughs> craziest experience so far. Oh, yeah. I, I, and I needed that experience because besides going to college, Shelby, I never really lived on my own. You know what I mean? So this was like me like escaping Jersey, leaving Jersey, doing everything on my own and just having two suitcases, Shelby. And so yeah, I yeah. was very, very, very driven, very committed to make it happen out here because this was it. Or go back to be a teacher. And I didn't want to do that. <laughs> How long were you, <laughs> you know? working? I mean, before I even 
received my degree, I was substituting and working at daycares, changing diapers, you know, being the only black man in a daycare were full mm -hmm. of car and, you know, it was, it's a liability and, it, and it's a trust. And no, so people trusted, me, <laughs> people trusted me with their kids. And so before that, uh, I was doing that. I graduated. I went back to the school I, I attended as a kid and I taught commuter, uh, computer science K through eight for like a year. <laughs> Yeah, I was teaching and also still going to the city and trying to meet people and do things and you know in my industry as well. It was very hard. I did it, you know what I mean? It's just not make excuses and just doing it. And um, yeah. So right now in Hollywood, uh, do you feel like there's a role that you would love to like fill the shoes for? I mean, I would love to do some biopics. You know what I mean? I would love to do the biopic of Luther Vandross or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. okay. I would love yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love to do biopics. Um, I mean, Black Panther, you know, that's something that, you know, I don't feel like no one should be able to, to fill. Just let it be what it is. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm also hearing that Black Panther, they're doing the second the second film is going to be a, um, just a memory of Chadwick Boseman and, and also his character. Um, so I would love I can to see you, you know, in that. I can yeah, see I would, they are doing a Black Panther series on Disney Plus. Mm -hmm. I would love to audition for that and see you know see what happens with that. But you know, I just want to tell Richard. I want to tell good stories. You know, I want to tell good stories that matters and that you know stories that people don't have the time to. Um, you know, I just want to tell stories that people are scared to tell. Um, I just want to be able to just fill, you know, fill in those shoes, you know, and, and I'm open to do any role, honestly, because I'm an actor. Uh, I, I know that I wanted my first role to be a role that all families and everyone together, you know, everyone could watch together. So I'm really happy about the yeah. Christmas role that I'm receiving now because it's, it's, it's a good introduction um, of me to the world um, because I don't know what's going to happen after that. You know what I mean? The roles, I mean, nowadays, everything is being showcased on television. So you just don't know. Um, and then you got to be comfortable with yourself and be okay. Like, oh, I could take on that role. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I just want to tell good stories. Mm. Um, so now that, you've been, now that you've been so consistent, like in the game, like what are some things and values that you've learned about yourself that you like now admire, like that you know is like one of your strengths now? Um, saying no, mm -hmm. saying no, mm -hmm. saying no. Um, I'm always, I've, I've been a yes man for a while. Um, and sometimes being a yes man doesn't mean like, oh, you're weak. Um, you just don't want to like disappoint people. Um, you don't want to disappoint people at all. I, I have a hard time like telling no to people because it's like, I don't want someone to tell me no. Um, so in the industry, I'm learning how to just um, take take accountable of my own career and just be that boss. Um, and, you know, and if there's an audition I don't want to do, Shelby, I'll decline it. And I'm, and, I, and, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. And I know what's for me is going to be for me. Um, so, yes, yeah, saying no, I'm learning to say no more. I'm learning to, um, you know, to hear people out. You know, hearing people out and, you know, hearing people's situations and their stories, not just being one minded. Um, you know, you, you learn a lot when you're by yourself. And I've been out here alone by myself for a while. I mean, I have my girlfriend here, but as far as like friends and stuff like that, I really don't have much anymore. I feel like I'm losing people every day because people don't understand the 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 dedication and you're just you're just winging it all and you can't commit to everything. And so people have a hard, you know, people have a hard time understanding that for me because it's like, oh, I'm always available for you, Alonzo. So now it's like, you can't be available for me. And it's like, I wish I can, but it's like, when an okay, when all, it's yeah, like when all, right. And when an audition comes, it's like, and if it's something good, I know I can potentially book, do it. You know what I mean? And it's, it's hard. I was supposed to be going to South Africa right after my birthday for three months in August. Um, yeah, so I'll be there until Thanksgiving. Wow. And I can right back to LA. I, I, yeah, I have an agency, I have a modeling agency out there. So I'll be, um, you know, working with a lot of their clients in Cape Town. And yeah, just really just having time to myself, you know? Yeah, and that's what it's all about, so. 
Yeah, I hope I answered your question. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> you know, what's been the biggest blessing and the most difficult thing about being in a relationship with an actress? Uh, well, a blessing, we split everything. Um, you know, I'm saving a lot. Um, the curse of it all, she knows everyone that I know. So it's like, you gotta be careful. You know, that's a great thing. <laughs> and she's, you know, she's starting to meet people that I know and, you know, people starting to recognize her because of me. So it's like, you know, it's, you know, it could be a curse at some time, <laughs> you know, it can be. Um, but again, you know, we're having a good time together. We, we're, we're booking a lot. You know what I mean? And you know, she's like doing on thing. it. You too. On it. The, the look and then you guys' chemistry, you guys are going to be booking way more stuff together. Like even oh, I can see that happening. I think so too. That would be you great. Guys have That's that what we would love to do. Yeah. Are yeah. you guys like doing business together too? We have a production company. Yeah. Um, so we just now started to do Good. skits and, you know, build our own thing because it's like, you know, it's cool to all it's it's cool to audition for people and you know make someone else's dream come true. But it's like it's good to always work on your own. You never know what can happen. So you know, she's done Broadway, and so we like to mix a little bit of Broadway with my crazy ideas. I love musicals and I love sketch comedy. And Saturday Night Live is would be like a dream come true for me. And so we like to do different parodies of situations. We just did one for uh four twenty. Um, so we did a, uh, a parody of uh, Rick James, Mary Jane, and it came out so good. We're getting a YouTube page created as we speak. Okay, um, so, yeah, it's, it's just taking it one day at a time. We just have a good time. You know what I mean? It's dope. It's dope. Honestly. It's expensive, though. You know, when you, you know, when you, when you create your own production, you're paying for everything. The stylist, you got, you got models and the locations. It's just, it's, it's, it gets, it's overwhelming. It's a good thing though, because it's like, now that you, especially when you save your receipts, of course, you get to show these production companies, this is how much I've been able to put in. So, yeah, that yes, yes. kind of thing. So, it, it, it works out. Mm -hmm. It definitely works out. Yeah, I agree. Which project are you most proud of? Right now, I'm the most proud of my first Christmas movie, The Christmas for Mary, you know, just seeing myself on TV for like almost two hours and like, wow, he's really doing it. You know what I mean? I didn't look nervous. You know, I didn't look like I wasn't supposed to be there. I looked like I belonged. And so I not looked great. And so it was really, really good. I love how hybrid productions and um, own network put everything together it, it really showcased my talent very well mm -hmm. i was very pleased i was very pleased who was your acting coach for that uh jamal mcneil he's uh also taraji p henson's coach oh. so uh, yeah 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 so uh he helped me you know maybe like a week before get everything down and also uh what i like to do is when i book something and if i have a leading lady reach out to him on social media and then we could do things like how we're doing, talking to each other, going over lines, mm -hmm. feeling each other's personalities and our strengths and our weaknesses. So we, when we get on set, no one is surprised. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so I love doing that. I did that with my second film, just, you know, just really gravitating towards each other's energies. Um, yeah, because we're going to be on set for like a month or two. So why not get to know each other? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I love it. So who's been your favorite um, acting coach so far? Favorite acting coach so far would have to be... Mm. Uh-oh, you in the spot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Jamal McNeil, he's, he's really great. He's really hands-on. Um, and I like how we just do it through FaceTime. Um, he makes it, you know, really personable. So he was really good. My first acting coach was Mark John Jeffries. Um, he's in New York. Right before I moved to LA, I worked with him and he was really good with, you know, instilling in me how to do a proper audition, and, you know, framing. Um, so I think that's really important when you're first starting out um, and scene study. So he was really good with that. I don't know if you guys know Mark John Jeffrey. Um, he's doing really good. He's, yeah, he's killing it. He was in Losing Isaiah and Stuart Little. 
Um, so he was my first acting coach in New York before I moved to LA. So he definitely um, helped me with um, instilling those certain things. So when I come out to LA, I won't be so lost. <laughs> <laughs> um, so between those two, they were really good. You know, I went to IDSA, Identity School of Acting, which is a school from um, London. I did online classes for the summer and in the fall, but I had to drop out because I'm so busy booking. Um, I'm so grateful for that. Um, but yeah, Jamal McNeil would have to be like my favorite one besides those other two I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Okay. So right now we're going to take a two minute break. Okay. Get to Good. breathe, grab some water. Yes, well, I actually got to go downstairs and grab something. So <laughs> you let me know. I'm going to bring my other phone with me. I, should I keep this on here? Oh, yeah, yeah, you're okay, fine. Cool. You're good. All right. Cool. I'll cut the video off then. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I want to know, why did you change your last name? I changed my last name because uh, my dad, his name is, his last name is Slater. And he really wanted me to change it to his last name. Um, and it's my legal, it's my legal name. I just don't use it as my stage name. Um, so no. now it's my stage name. Yeah. All of my documents and everything. What was that, what was that conversation like? Like, I want you to um, change your last name. Yeah, you know, he just felt the way, you know, because, you know, people would know me as just Alonzo Brown and he's on Facebook and like on social media. And he's like, you know, you should want to leave your legacy. And, you know, I had to think about it too. And like, you know what? He's right. Slater is, is a very strong last name. And I feel like it would definitely um, help me in the industry. And it has. Um, it, it, it sounds very good. It sounds like I have my shit together. <laughs> you know what I mean and so it, it, you know I was like all right let's do it you know and I spoke to my mom about it she's like yeah I've been told you to do that you know what I mean like whatever happened in the past just let it go um and so I did let it go you know but you always keep it in you know you never forget it you know what I mean but uh yeah so that's the reason why I changed that I changed it because you know because my dad wanted me to and I you know I, I did it for him so he's very happy about it do you have other like positive male figures in your life? Uh, mm, that's older than me. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I wish, you know what I mean? I wish, I mean, meeting Chadwick, he has to be one of them, you know what I mean? I only met him that one time and I felt like we known each other for a long time, you know what I mean? But, um, there's, I mean, there's people, there's, you know, other, uh, you know, black guys in the industry that's doing it, you know, and that, you know, where I, I would love to be in those, um, you know, those seats, uh, but no, no, no one else inspires me like that. No, there's no, <laughs> no, I can't think of no one. Really? I can't think of not one person. Not even Denzel? Well, well, as far as the industry, yeah. I mean, there's Denzel Washington, there's Michael Ely, Morris Chestnut, Brad Pitt, George Clooney. <laughs> the list goes on. You know, I'm a, you know, I'm a huge fan of Usher, even though I'm not a singer. He's one of my favorite performances of all time. Um, yeah, Luther Vandross. There's so many, you know, black African American male figures that you know that really uh, shook shit up that I admire. Diddy. You know what I mean? The list goes uh, on. Real, but as far as... Real quick, when you got on, I really thought you had some singing in you. I'm like, yo, he looked like he got... Yeah, everyone thing I can sing. <laughs> I know, I know. I definitely want to get back into, you know, because I did audition for mine. I, I did have a voice when I was young at, at first, but it's gone now. But um, no I would love way. to get back It's still there. Yeah. It's still there. Now we got to hear it. <laughs> yeah, one day. Oh, you on Apple Music real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know you got a voice. So, um, what is what were your biggest limiting beliefs? Um, being broke, you know, knowing, you know, I was always instilled at a at a young child in my house, so that you know, you need a job to pay your bills, you need a job for a good pension, and you know, take some good benefits. Um, 
So that's what I was always taught as a young kid to always have a nine to five. This stuff right here that I'm doing now is like, it really wasn't that really wasn't much supporting. I didn't have a lot of support back at home, but my grandmother, she passed away. Um, she's the one that brought me to the Lion King audition. She will give me scripts to read while we're in the car. And she was, she was the person that was into the arts. She threw, you know, she would um, do stage plays in Maryland and she was into selling clothes and stuff like that. So she was really into the whole arts of it all. And she felt that I can do it too. And I would look at my grandma like, grandma, I don't really want to read a script. I'd rather go to Toys R Us, you know, or get a game or something like that, or just go play. Yeah. Um, and so I feel like I'm really, I'm like, she's so proud of me right now. I, I really, I wish she was here to see everything, but uh, I know she's watching over me. Uh, but yeah, those, you know, I was, I will always hear like, oh, you need a job, you know, or like, oh, you're going to LA, you're about to be 30. You sure? <laughs> so it's the age thing. Yeah. And, you know, it's security, security and age. That's the biggest thing I feel like that I've experienced in my household or just just people around me. Um, you know, not a lot of support back in Jersey. Well, you know, you move into California. What was the biggest thing that you learned? Like uh, your first year there, let's say. That no one gives a fuck. No one cares at all. No one cares if someone passed away. No one cares if you have, you know, if someone's Some people close care. To Some people Some people, care. but as far as like casting is concerned, like people in the casting office, like these, you know, your agents, like you really have to be on your A-game and you really have to stay on top of them if you want something to happen. Like I feel I hear a lot of actors out here, they get an agent and they just let their agents do all the work. Why would you do that? Right. Why would you just right. let this one person dictate your whole career? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And like I always say, it takes it's 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 50 50. You, they have they need things to promote and, you know, and pin you, you know, how, how are they going to you know pitch you if you have nothing? You know what I mean? So you got to make sure you're on your shit as far as headshots, uh, making sure all your uh, website outlets are updated. Did you um, reach out to an agent or did they? I had a, I had an agent coming from New York, but it wasn't, you know, I still wasn't getting work all the time, but I had to pitch and write my own emails to agents and managers to get meetings. Um, before coming to LA, I did like this LA pilot trip. I paid over like a thousand dollars and for a weekend, you will audition in front of agents and managers for the whole weekend. Oh, wow. it, 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 it was a lot. Um, was it worth it? It was, I feel like it was worth it, you know, just getting used to how LA run their shit, um, you know, so they will tell you if your headshot wasn't up to part, because I feel like there's a difference between, you know, headshots, uh, headshot caliber from New York and LA, you know, yeah, just dreaming, the lighting, the smiling, the smizing, the eyes, it all, <laughs> it all just, it all comes into, you know, into fruition. And, um, yeah, that, you know, that I met, I met an agent who I'm still with now, I'm still with them now. And yeah, it, it, I feel like all of that is beneficial. Um, like I said, it's very, it's a very expensive career. Um, so, you know, make sure your, your pennies and your coins is all up to, you know, up to, uh, up to terms with, you know, with that. But um, yeah, it was. When uh, you start making money, like it's like that money comes back, right? So much money in my career, as far as photo shoots and headshots and just everything, just clothes. When you go out, you gotta look good. You're selling yourself. Yeah. You don't have to now show. But like, I'll how show. were you able to get out of that like broke? I'm gonna say broke mentality, using your words, broke mentality, because that's just knowing that it's not gonna last forever, and just you know, I was humble about my shit, Shelby. I was working, you know, washing dishes. You know, I was working at the science. Yeah, I was work. I was washing dishes at this little place in uh on Sunset Boulevard. I forgot. I can't believe it. It's like I can't believe it. Yeah, I was doing it. I was a cashier register at the Science Center downtown. I was working at Louis Vuitton. I was working at Maggiano's. I was working all over the place, but no one would even you wouldn't know because I'm not going to put that on social media. You know what I mean? I was really hustling out here until it just all made some sense. And I feel like my girlfriend moving out here, she definitely helped because I couldn't even pay for rent. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was hard. It was yeah. very hard. Yeah. Um, but uh, you That's know, we, I, get it. I was like renting out my room, and then right, the other know, room know, was I like know, the Airbnb. I, I was sleeping on the couch in my own <laughs> apartment. You yeah. Know, like, you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> Absolutely. And I had nine roommates, you know, people nine sleeping in the same Nine roommates, a cat, a dog, and a snake. In that house. And we, and we were living on um on Manchester on 87th. Oh, so no the way. area wasn't the best, you know. It it was and I see you're still not driving. What's that about? You don't want to drive. I know we well, our neighbor just let us borrow her car for like a couple of days, but we're in the in the uh, in the middle of getting a new car. Um, uh, actually, okay. went on, I went on a test drive earlier for a car, so we might I was get like you're such an East Coaster, still don't want to drive. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> I mean, I was I was also in a really bad car accident too, right after graduation, so that really like took a toll on me too. But I still drive. I drive in commercials and shit like that. But you know, it takes time, and people in LA can't drive at all i feel like so <laughs> or anywhere in the world people don't know how to right, drive. right yeah um are there any like um casting biases that you like notice or ever experience just from the world of acting and auditions and stuff like or anything like you'd like to shed light on that you were probably surprised about just from being in in the oh world? yeah when i go into auditions they're asking about your social media handle you mm-hmm. know not they don't even care about your talent that much. It's like, oh, yeah, that you know that one. That one really surprised me. I'm like, wow, you care about Instagram, and so just everyone is always watching you. And so that was like really, I took that really caught me off guard. I'm like, wow, you don't you don't care about my headshot <laughs> or like what I'm going to do, you know? So they ask for the Instagram handle right when you walk into the room. Um, so that might have to be one. Another one. Um, I, I see the same faces all the time in auditions. They like the guys that look like me. So, I, you know, it's like maybe like two or three of us that they bring in all the time. So that's yeah. really cool. Like, you know, if you don't have it, well, we're pretty sure the next guy will. So, it's like, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, it, it is like humbling. Like, wow, it's like you got to stay on your shit because if you are not ready, the other guy that looked just like you, he might be ready. Um, so yeah, those are like the only two things that I've recognized. Um, and also about, uh, people be knowing certain people too, like in the casting room. And I feel like that might be like, mm-hmm. thing too. so it was like, it's like, damn, like you could go so hard on, on an audition, be off book, be that person. But then it's like, if you don't know so-and-so it's like, it's, you're out of the, you're out of the loop. It's very relationship based. You know? Absolutely, it could work because it's like it can it's work, issue, it, though. Right, like, and that's why I, meet people all the time. So it could absolutely, work. and that's why when I'm on set, I'm always nice to everyone, from crafty to stylist, your yeah. crew. You got to, you just because you just never know who can give you a next job. And so you know, I'm always nice to everyone, um, and they love that, and they bring you back too if you're that if you're that type of guy. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Um, before like uh the auditions and stuff like was there ever like any way like you used to prep but you don't do it no more like you uh, you switch it out with a new like repertoire technique. like a new technique uh, new I mean, when, when i was auditioning especially like for tv shows i used to always have my script in my hand i was very insecure with me like not knowing the lines and still you know, giving, you know, performing a good job. But, you know, my girlfriend definitely helped with me, you know, um, audition technique with like putting the script down, being off book, being present. If you mess up, still go on, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. those things I've, I've changed as far as like as my audition technique to do better self tapes. And let me tell you, my audition tapes have, have been, have been a lot better than what it used to be two years ago. You know, so, <laughs> a lot better, you know, just being, just being in, you know, and not having a script in your hand. I feel a lot better when I don't have the script in my hand. You know? mm. so, yeah. What do you, like, what can you teach actors out there? You really want to do this. Uh, I mean, what I would tell my younger self, or besides, like, you know, besides background is for the birds. Besides oh, the- well, besides <laughs> background is for the birds, really study about this stuff you know study 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 as far as like 
watching interviews with certain with your favorite celebrities that's in your favorite shows really see how they got to from point a to point b um studying is very important um taking classes if you don't know what the hell you're doing take a class because that class can, can definitely open your eyes up to different things that you never knew anything about um so take photos you know if you're you know if you if you're a model take photos know your angles you know what i mean because everyone has different angles on how they like to pose um study your favorite models um be out you know be present so people can see you you know what i mean and just try to just i know it's hard you know and i'm saying all this and when people used to say this to me i'm just like uh <laughs> it, is, it is hard you know i get it you know but just stay stay in court stay stay in just stay in even if you got to get a side job don't forget what your plan A is. You no, know, I feel like people get jobs or like they start getting interested into different things. They forget about what the fuck they came out to LA for. And then then by that time, your shot is done. You know what I mean? They're, <laughs> they're giving all their attention to someone else. Um, so just stay, you know, just, just stay focused, you know, and also getting rid of people that don't need to be around you. I think that's number one before we get to the other steps I just said. Getting rid of negative people that don't belong. I remember you had mentioned that to me a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. Get, 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 get away. Get away. Get away. Move. Just, that's you know? kind of what happens when you first move there. It's like people kind of like leech onto you. I don't yeah, know they leech you. onto you. Yeah, they think it's yeah, clear. They're, they're leeching onto you, but you still trying to figure it out too. Oh, you know? Thank you. And you like, wait, wait, this is not gonna work out. I, I can't have this person around. Like I, I get it. Mm-hmm. You know, I get mm-hmm. it. I don't know if it's for me. I think I think this is what I think it is, right? It's this whole idea of Hollywood. We think, oh, mm-hmm. Hollywood is this and that, but our idea of Hollywood is fake. And so people move to LA expecting to be this fake person. But it's like the realer you are, the more you're gonna vibe with people. Absolutely. Do you, would you agree I, with that? I agree. Yeah. Absolutely. That's how we gravitated towards each other, you and me. You know, it yeah, was just real. We just seeing each other eye to eye. And, yeah. and you're wearing um black vogue shirt. That stood out to me. Um, what's it? What black, black Vogue. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow, you got a good memory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, I remember. It was like 46 degrees that day. They had us in the It was room. very cold, very cold. <laughs> I met you and uh, what's her name? The heavy set girl, Rick, uh, Kishana. I forgot her name. She's an actress. Oh, but, you remember her? Like, she was uh, hilarious. Kashuna. Kashuna. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a sweetheart. We still talk. She loved you. She loved you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's doing really good. She's still out here. Okay. Yeah. So what yeah. keeps you grounded and humble? What keeps me grounded and humble? My mother, she keeps me humble. <laughs> uh, you know, my girlfriend, you know, my, you know, my family friends that I decide to keep around me, they keep me as, you know, they keep me sane. Um, also, I mean, I live downtown in LA. <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot of homeless. So every time I walk out my building, it's a it's a humbling experience because I know how it can be. It can be this way very quickly. Very you understand what I'm saying? So it's like that alone is a is a humbling experience. Fuck up, you know, fuck people. That alone, just watching it every day. And it's like, oh, it's crazy. And then you see kids over there too. I'm right across the street from like tents and so right. many homeless mm-hmm. people. Like really close to Skid Row. Beautiful building, but the outside area is trash. So that alone is very humbling. Mm. So Alonzo, I see that you're a very positive man. So like, yes. uh, how do you keep your mental health so positive? We. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Is there anything Shit. else? Or if else? I don't have my weed, I'm a loose cannon. I'm cursing out everybody. If I have my weed and my music, I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm in, I, just, I just sit back. I just think about life and think about what I want to do with my life. I'm, I'm also good with writing too. So I just write down things and ideas. Marijuana definitely keeps me in the loop and keeps, it just keeps me uh, together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. 
And I also love, and I also love giving back too. So I partnered up with my good friend, Legendary Damon, and we give back every Friday or when I try to get out there. <laughs> you know, we give back and we feed the homeless every week. Oh. And we, yes, we bring clothes and we, you know, we try to like, you know, be there for them because like they are going through so much, you know, and we feed them and we sit down, we talk to them at least for like an hour, an hour every, you know, every Friday, you know, give them some, you know, a nice warm dinner. Besides that, I would love to have my own talent agency down the road and, you know, you know, give back and, you know, help other talent that's in need of, you know, getting representation or just having questions or just mentorship. I feel like it's so important. You know, people, you know, people are like, they always like to like shade away from like helping their peers out that, you know, and it's like, we could all come together Right. And one is yeah. right. There's opportunities for everyone, you know. So I believe that. Absolutely. Yeah. So what's your five year goal? My five year goal, I would love my production company to be bigger than what it is now. Um, maybe some sponsors, or maybe I could have like my own um, you know, my own network something like that. I would love to be Alonzo uh, Slater, Alonzo B. Slater Network. Right, you know what I mean? Or like a series, I would love to be a series regular, have my own TV show. Um, yeah, just just better than what I'm doing right now. Just more opportunities, more opportunities. And I would love to work with, you know, people that I love in the industry and I respect in the industry as well. Yeah. It's going to happen. It's happening now. I yeah, really it is. Thank you so much. You're awesome. I really thank you so much, Shelby. Joining us. Tell I people to how can it. they follow you and all that good stuff. Yeah, Instagram, Alonzo B. Slater, uh, Facebook, Alonzo B. Slater, uh, Twitter, Alonzo underscore Brown. I can't change my username on Twitter. I don't know why. Uh, but we're getting a That's YouTube weird, page huh? created. Yeah, we're getting a YouTube page created, Alonzo and Mia Productions. Um, so you get to see all of our skits on there all day, every day if you want. <laughs> so yeah, everything is allowed to be slated. That's my website as well. So yeah, definitely stay tuned. We, we, you know, I'm working on so much content and I'm just very happy to be in the space that I'm in now. Um, I'm, I'm really, really happy, really happy. It's a long time coming. Yes. And I'm just happy. I'm, I'm happy if I, you know, it, you know, it's coming and I, and I see the light at the end of the tunnel. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And you, and look at you, you're doing podcasts now. Look at you, uh, 105.1 Breakfast Club. Oh, you are. Like, this is amazing. This is what I'm talking about. Do something. Build. Build. Build, <laughs> build and build. Yes, yes. Yes, thank you. And I would love to come back on here and, you know, talk more yes. about the second movie when it comes out. So. Yes. Well, it's a date. It's a date. Yep. Definitely rock with you, man. Uh, definitely love this episode, too. You dropped a lot of jewels, man. I know that. Yeah, thank y'all so much for having me to even, you know, drop jewels. So, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good day. You too. Right, you too.